Well, folks, it is, of course, the Kev and Pickle Show. This week, we are delighted to welcome on the exceptionally gifted Mark Duffy from, of course, Mark Duffy Photography. Mark, how are you, mate? Not bad, not bad, isn't it? I, I like that. I like that intro. <laughs> yeah, you you got to make it count. You know what I mean? See, so like, And it's true. You know what I mean? Come on. It's it's true. True as hell, like. I'm, so, very critical, uh, I'm very critical of myself, so I wouldn't be one for, <laughs> you know. Ah, well, we'll start them. again. We'll start again. Here's an average <laughs> average <laughs> photographer. Mm-hmm. Right? Ah, yeah, okay, okay. Average <laughs> with a beautiful, shiny head. <laughs> yeah, so it is like, hey. But yeah, but come here, keep them well, yeah? All's good? Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, yeah. Have a juice. Not oh, so I'm bad. taking it easy. Well, trying to take it easy. You know yourself, it's all, all a bit of a ball, but shall we get there in the end? Kev, you're like me, Kev. You're like me. You wouldn't work on batteries. <laughs> no, I'm not. As, as you know, as you know, it's quite well, Mark. Yeah, you can't can't evolve so with that. I got rid of my full time job with a photographer, like. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I gotta get a camera. Oh, um, yeah. So, do uh, Kev jump in? I know you have some questions for this man. Yeah, Mark. As as you know, uh, Mark do Mark Duffy photography. You've got different. I've been on the website. You've got different say pictures you take. You've got say headshots, portrait, food, landscape, all that sort of carry on. But like, where, where did the love of photography come into place? Like, I, I know it probably didn't come into place in Ridley's or anything like that. But where did where did it come into place, and how did it all come about? I actually used to photograph in Ridley's back in the day. Okay. I used, to say, I used to, I, Brian Oliver used to give me a camera and it was on auto and he would just go, but he'd give it to anyone. Like, you know, and I had the camera and I used to just go around to anyone at all and me, don't be shy, the camera's not. And like, you know what I mean? Just try and get photos. But, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a photographer then. I you wouldn't even class it then. Uh, I worked as a graphic designer for 10 years and I was working for Boy Sports and I grew to absolutely hate working as a graphic designer. And while I was working there, um, you know, when you're in your free time in that company, they allowed you to go on to YouTube to upskill yourself, learn new okay. things. And why not learn? <laughs> <laughs> and I also, as well as that, because like, I'm, I'm a drummer 20 years and I'd be, free, I'd be freelancing around the country and I'd be playing with different bands and different players. And I kept hearing this over and over again. How's the North? How's the trouble in the North? How much of a scum hole is Dundalk and County Loud and all oh, your loud or this, that? And I was just like, it's not that bad, lad. So I had a whole lot of GoPros to advertise myself as a drummer and they can do time lapses. So I was just like, you know what? We've got the Pro League Dolmen, we've got Cullen's Castle, Roach Castle, and a couple of other places that I'd never been to. And I was just like, so I'll do time lapse and I'll do a hyper lapse and stuff. And, you know, people won't have seen this at all. And it'd be, it might be something cool. And I spent six months at it. And then within a weekend, it hit 25,000 views on YouTube. And then I had photographers mailing me going, stop wasting your time with them GoPros. Get yourself a DSLR. You should be a photographer. And like, like the house a minute, the minute, we had just bought the house. Yeah. And we were, we were getting quotes from builders to, to renovate because we got at the house. And where I am at the minute is the old garage, which was, which was converted into a studio purposely so I could do YouTube videos teaching drums, not doing photography. Okay. That never even came into the you know i was going to get those kind of cameras so i could do decent quality videos but it was never to be a photographer and so i i went early i had money you know i money aside for possibly cameras instead i spent my whole budget even for even for my computer on camera yeah i got completely hooked on it (laughs) (laughs) absolutely hooked and i got a great deal as well the deal i got was a camera and a couple of lenses and i sold the lenses for the price of the camera i bought it for and then bought upgraded cameras and just nice move I know, yeah, I'm yeah. shrewd like that. I'm shrewd like that. Um, I'd be on advert study all the time, even, <laughs> even for drums doing the same stuff. Like, you know, you see a good deal, buy it and use that to leverage yourself for a better deal, continually spiraling yeah. on. Um, but it turned, it went from, it went quickly. I'd say within three weeks, it went from being a hobby to an obsession. And it was all I thought of it. All I thought of it. Day in, day out, all day long, all day long. And um, but it was never to be a full time job. That was the only thing. I never wanted it to be a full time job. And then I released the book, uh, Loud Rediscovered. Yeah. yeah. And then I and then I got hired by Fox Ireland, and I was just like, oh, this actually could be a fun job to do, and started pursuing it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was this. Well, you need a startup point. Like you know, what I mean, if Fox Ireland was what that was, then it was able to give you that yeah. kind of belief, like you said, of hey, I could actually go and do this now. Full-time. Yeah. And, 
and the thing about it was is like with, I, the problem I have a graphic design was you know um, to give a really crude way of the way it works in that industry is people will come to you with a brief and the brief will be I want you to design me an elephant design me an elephant that's the brief they give you all these mood boards and everything is all related to an elephant I want you to design an elephant and by the time you give them the final product it's an anorexic scuba diver and it's just like where did the, where did we go wrong like it's just <laughs> Like, where do we go wrong? Yeah. Where, do we go from, where do we go from an elephant to a scuba diver? These have nothing to do with each other. And I just, it, this is, this was constant. But, do you know, someone asks you for a photo of a car, you do a couple of nice shots of the car, and they're like, that is unbelievable. Here's my money. See you later. I'm going to call you again. You get a call then going, I saw what you did there. Can you do this? And you just start getting calls. And it's, I just find it easier to get through the briefs and deliver, because there was always a joke with designs the first version is for your portfolio and version 200 is for the client but you'd oh, never do anything else yeah. and it, because it just gets diluted and diluted and diluted yeah. but with photography it's not the, it's not the case at all and especially the jobs that i take on um i don't want to if, if i even if i even think it's going to turn out like that i won't take the job on i won't i don't sure. it's not a case that i price myself out i just turn around yeah. and say, I'm, I, yeah. I'm not it's exactly. not for you like, oh yeah <clears throat> sorry like as you see, you see your book is more or less is a lot to do with landscapes, Mark, and see the local area. Would that be your favorite type of photography or would it be a different genre altogether? Oh, that's my favorite. That is so even though I am now working full time photography and and like half my earnings a year is still coming from selling prints and books and stuff with the landscape photography, the landscape photography is my hobby. It's still it still yeah. is, is my hobby, like you know, and uh, the only thing is, like you know, it's you know, like I'm, I want to, I want to do a sunset in the cliffs of Moher. It's a four-hour drive, and I'll drive and come home. Yeah. I won't stay over. I'll just drive, get the shot, and come home. You know, Mullamore and Sligo, same again. Go get the shot, plan it, plan it to an nth degree. Go at the exact right time, and if you don't, go back again. Keep going back again until you get that one shot. And I, I, think, even, I, think, I think you had one on Instagram. I think you, you were talking about one on Instagram. I think it could have been last year, Mark. And he was up up uh, the Cooley Mountains. You were trying to get a shot of the of the sunset on the Cooley Mountains. I think it was behind the cross, something like that. And then like, some of the stuff that you do, like how long does it take to set up the perfect shot? Like, uh, like okay. when you mean just, just when you mean just setup wise, or well, even, even you want to get a sunset at the right time, looking over the right moment to pick up the right, say, shadow, whatever it is, Mark. Like, how, like, how do you know you're going to be on the moment? I know you were talking about loud weather before we went live. So, <laughs> I, I, how do you pick up that right nice moment plug. and say, this is the one? Um, I usually, I, I would do a lot of research, loads of research to the area. What for, what for, like a lot of photographers try not to see what other photographers have done so they don't get influenced. But it's always a good idea just to kind of have an idea as to, like when you're looking at the map, when you're looking on a map and you can see the building, you're like, Where, where's the front of it? Is it north facing, west? East, you know, where you really need to know where that is to then know where you want to place the sun and stuff in the composition. Um, and I have a couple of apps then with, that will actually track the movement of the sun, so it'll tell me the placement of the sun. So you can get into like real geeky level yeah. with that where you turn around and say, if now if you understand it, I don't fully understand how to figure this out, but if you turn around and say, I want the sun in this position in the photo and yeah, I'm the building, so that's like 15 degrees up, it'll tell you to the minute. Every day of the year, it'll appear there because the, the sun moves throughout the year. Um, and, and so I have it's a, an app called Photo Pills. So I'll use that for research. I have another app called Ventusky, which tracks, like I was saying just before we come on here, uh, which will track the cloud movement. So I can I can track the, the different altitudes of clouds. So it means that I'm not just depending on any other app like AccuWeather where it just says intermittent clouds. I'm like, yeah. well, like how heavy are the clouds towards the horizon? Are they going to block the sun? You know, because I need the sun right there or are they going to get rid of the color? I really want the light, airy, fairy ones, you know, to illuminate pink and all that there. But like, that's only, the only thing is that is only for really for landscape probably that I would go to that extent with the portraits and stuff. You don't really need to. Yeah. I love the picture of your brother on the website. It's like, it's like, it's like, there he is buying a headshot. There he is, in, 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 right in the middle of it. I'd say that was a, I'd say that was a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he gets he gets a bit of slagging. I, I don't know why. There's people like, oh, you think you're a model, and I'm like going, <laughs> well, you know what? Your slag at him is complimenting my photography because I had to have done a good job for you to think like that. So yeah, 
you know, yeah, he, he gets he gets a, he gets a bit of slagging uh, unjust unjustly, I think. But I should look. If somebody has to say something all the time, there's always somebody that has an opinion. I, 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 I say like, he's got a hairline mark. You know what I mean? He's a hairline as well. <laughs> we're, going, we're going there, are we? <laughs> yeah. There's no point with me either. Like I'm staying out of that conversation. Well, so no. I am. Well, well, Pico, I think I think for 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 your followers and your listeners, just to let them know as well, what Kevin's picking at there is the fact that me and Brendan are twins. Yeah, he's yeah. an hour older than me. I'm five foot eight. He's five foot ten with a full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Kev, you love what I see you do. Oh, like, okay. That's it. But like, Mark, some of the stuff like I I'll be on the website. I I've seen stuff that you've done. Like the my, my favorite is probably uh, the one of the Brembo Lacuri. It's literally it's a two minute walk from me here. Uh, behind me, like, and it is that, as you said, the, the, the pinks in the sky and the yeah. lights coming from the. It is absolutely fantastic, and even the stuff that you don't recognize. Not that you don't recognize, but you don't visit as much as you think you would. Like, like okay. Roach Castle, it's absolutely stunning. Like, I think the first time I was in Roach Castle, Mark, I'll be honest, was last year. Like, you know what I mean? It's just something you, you don't really pick up on going. Uh, and there's a lot of local places that people might see in your photography and then might want to visit, like the Dolmens, like. People have a lot of people, even around the area. You know, Pickle probably hasn't been there. Like, no. it's just a lot of people don't visit because they'd rather rather travel to to go away to see something or just Dublin to see something. When I mean, there's so much on our on our doorstep, and that was the that was one of the reasons why I did the book in the first place was to show that, like, because what a lot of people don't know is outside of Kerry, Dublin, Loud has the largest number of heritage sites per capita. Compare, we're the smallest county we've the largest number of heritage sites you count how many castles are within 20 minutes of the dock yeah like try and do the same with Navan. you'll get like you know if you go castles and ruins you get like back to Babby uh, I'm even struggling already like, you Trim right, Castle that's about the height you just start talking castles you're into different yeah. towns you know what I mean yeah. you, go yeah. to Spain, you go to Trim you know, but like within Dundalk, you don't have to go to another town you've got loads of castles Roach, Coo Hollins um, Dunmahan Castle Bellingham King John's up in Car- up in Carlingford, yeah, you're in a, you're in another you're in a village, but you're not in another main town. Yeah, yeah. you know, for a while, like you know, and there's there's so much, just so much here, and there's still a lot of stuff I haven't been to. Um, uh, you know, after the book, people were telling me about things, and some of them are are, are on farmland, and I try not to go into fields with cattle anymore because I've had some hairy experiences. <laughs> even, at Roach, even at Roach Castle, I got chased out of Roach Castle with a herd of cattle. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not a good day. I, I but, was but, not- but, is, like, but a lot of these places are just open to the wild. Uh, like then, in Dublin and the stuff, you've got walls and it's people being protective. Like in Loud, it seems to be just it's it's wild, it's open. Like especially Roach Castle, it's like you jump across a gate and you're in some. It is it's farmland, and then the castle's stuck in the middle of it. Like and it is oh. stuff like that. You see, it's you need you need to, you need to come back up. You need to come back towards town and go to the other gate to put in the posh pedestrian gate you don't need to climb over them anymore you can just oh, walk right, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I would climb over gate and then pile the steps and then into, into pile the shit and then you, you you walk up to it that way but that's no, what it is yeah if you if you had gone up the hill a little bit further <laughs> okay he, he put in it he the, the farmer put in a pedestrian gate for people I'm so delighted do. now that you only know that now Kev so I do right it's so I do like may as well do it the old way it's better yeah <laughs> but look at Mark right I, I'm, I love I used to go out for six o'clock walks there for a long time in the morning, go out six o'clock, a lot of walking because I love taking photos, right? Okay. Now, I got a lovely photograph one time of the sun coming up uh, down the bottom of Barrack Street. Um, so it was, it was just coming up over the mountains and that sky was just completely orange. I thought it was like unbelievable. But I love taking pictures down by the Navi Bank, right? Okay. Hitting off the sea, right? I love getting pictures like that, right? But like, I'm seeing a place that you put pictures of very recently, right? Called Tullymore Forest Park. Oh, There's yeah. Fucking... Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Yeah. There is a fucking waterfall in it. Yeah, and by the way, you can swear on this podcast, right? There's a oh, fucking yeah. waterfall on it. What the hell? We have a waterfall, like, down the road. Wait, wait. Do you not know the waterfall that I went to in Omis? Did you see that one last year? No. No. Oh man, that was one, even that closer. One, that, one, that one's sketchy as fuck. Like to get to get into. I, I I know I played into football with the with the son of the landowner. And he came to me in the game, you know. And people yeah. come to me all the time, and they're oh, we think this will be good, think this will be good. And I, you know, I always give them benefit of the doubt because you'd never know. And James came up to me and he goes, "Got one for you." And I was like, "All right, well, show me where. What's the, do you have any kind of anything to kind of give me an idea?" As to, and I was like, dude, you got to get down here. And like, turns out, like, the locals knew of it, but he, he didn't even know of it. And uh, 
but it's sketchy to get down. It's so sketchy. They actually put truck ties on some of the trees so you can climb down into it. Like, and the day that we went oh, was God. a was a low water. So I actually climbed into where you'd normally be two foot covered in water. I was actually standing lower. So the water foot was even taller again. Uh, Tony Moore, yeah. Uh, so class. Um, the Game of Thrones was filmed. I was going to ask you, because there was certain photos they had up on it, and I was thinking to myself, it kind of looks... Where oh, is that? The whole thing. It's up in... Uh, yeah. It's up outside Newcastle. Okay. So, so it is. We're going, in, going in, in towards Newcastle, you, you just you hang a right, and you, you go into this, this forest park, and it's just... Like, the, the week of the 4th of November, every year except for this year, because of the way the, the, way the colours fell this year, for some reason, it's a late season. It caught everyone off. It caught everyone off because I would be texting different photographers and Stephen Hanna from Ballymena. Me and him were supposed to head together to Tullymore and he headed. I couldn't either shoot on that day and um, he couldn't and he got there and he went, dude, leave it for another week. It's still green. And there was loads of photographers got hit. So you'll see there's loads of their photographers, loads of their shoots this year have green leaves and are annoyed. The day that I went, I went on a Tuesday, and I be there first thing in the morning. Now, I, like, I know you're you're saying, Pickle, that you love going for six o'clock in the morning walks. Yeah. I don't sleep till two or three in the morning. I absolutely hate having to get up in the mornings. Yeah, you see, in the summer especially, that I do a sunrise. I don't go to bed. I yeah. just yeah. Up. that's what okay. I do. So if I, because there's no way I can get to bed at two to be back up at four. Yeah, yeah, Actually, yeah. Sunrise, sunrise is at half four, like so. Yeah. Um, but uh, the day that I went there was a Tuesday. And I ran into at least 20 photographers. And I know mates that went on the Saturday then. And they were at one spot and there was 10 photographers at that one spot. It's a really heavily hit spot at, okay. at, in autumn. But throughout the year then, you know, you're, you're, it's golden. But go early in the morning to avoid the tourists. And um, Otherwise, because like some of them stepping stones. Just, That's what I was just going to ask you. The yeah. one I was looking at was the stepping stones photo, uh, yeah. which, which you called my perfect photo of yeah. the stepping stones like it's just it's incredible so it is well, like, some, some of the places around like it is like nature in ireland is absolutely fantastic like there's that park i can't remember up beside oh what's the what's the castle king in, in dunery it does some stuff some of the stuff in dunery is just unbelievable like even just to visually like I, and I, i'll be honest i try to do um, my best with my samsung a51 you know what i mean <laughs> and at certain angles you're like look how good i am i'm getting lying down in the Turn the phone upside down. Exactly. Turn the phone upside down. You're laughing. You're you're laughing. Yeah. This is this yeah. is amateur. This is professional. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely fantastic. I, I like this is works and it kind of works, but like I, I never I can, thought of yeah. that. Oh, yeah. you, you, you get lower. <laughs> you get lower. And it's like boom. And like I, I showed showed the reason once. So that's a really good one. But yeah, I think it's people want to. I think discover all this stuff and it is kind of fun to take pictures and it is good fun to look back at them. But like I just said, the book loud read loud rediscovered, like it is absolutely fantastic. Look look through it and it's still on sale on the website there, Mark on Mark Duffy, uh Mark Duffy Photography dot com. And um, it's it's on sale there, you know what I mean? Like, so guys, if you are interested, get it on the book. It's a, oh, he's getting it is that time of year. It is, time of year. it is a Christmas present uh, that you can definitely there we put go. in your see, look at always one nearby. Two in the post coming from me and Kevin now, so there is. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely buried under about, under about half a dozen. I don't know if I broke something there trying to grab that. <laughs> well, like you may you said as well, just to skip slightly from photography, you're a drummer. You've been drumming for a hell of a long time, man. 20 right? years. So, like, I know obviously now you're probably either drumming very early in the day or you're simply not going to be drumming for a while. No, I'm still what? drumming. I was, I was in Ladder Kenny on Saturday night. And I'm in, I'm in the Keys and Galway this Saturday. Nice. Once you're finished, obviously, by 12 o'clock. So Thankfully. you don't yeah, get... Because, like, uh, Letter Kenny is an absolute... Because it's in the, the, the venue Voodoo, and it was an absolute nightmare of a gig to play before COVID. Because you don't you don't start playing until one in the morning. So you don't finish till three. You don't get the gear down. You're not back in the car till four. Yeah. And it's a two-hour, 15 drive. Most times I get there... I'd have to pull in to go for a sleep on the way home. I'd be lucky if I got to Oma without having to pull in to go for a sleep. Okay. Um, that's the toughest thing. But the only thing is, see from all my years of gigging like that there, of driving long journeys in the middle of the night and then coming home. Like, I know photographers, and they're like, oh, if I had to go to the other side of the country, I have to stay over. And I'm not like going, I'm not staying over. Yeah. Killarney is the only place I won't come home from because it's too far of a drive. I've tried to do it before, and it's just too tough. You end up, you get to Port Leash. And you get to Midway, it's on Junction 17, big, massive car park. 
and you end up sleeping for hours and you just, you know, you're wrecked for days after. So it's the only place I won't come home from. But go away, Limerick, Cork, anywhere except for Killarney is the only yeah. spot that I won't come home from. So even for photos, I'd be like, yeah, they're all they're all doable because you're, you're not going at the worst weather times. Like I'm not going to be going out shooting that storm tomorrow. I might go to Black Rock. Yeah. But you know what? I, I I like my I like my equipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my equipment. <laughs> I, I I invest in it and I want to keep it. Like you know what I mean? Uh, like 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 you said as well. Like, yeah, drum- cameras don't really like salt the water. It's not really a thing that doesn't no, really go well. Uh, no, it's funny that it's funny that we all try to put them in and like you know we'll all have our tripods and there'll be all carbon fiber and stuff <laughs> so they can go in the water. But like I try not to as much as I can. Um, like I've had aluminium tripods for years and you know, when I wash them and clean them, as soon as I as soon as I come out of them, if I go to do C step photos, I don't even fold the tripod up. I wipe it down as soon as I, I get into the car, I come home, I wipe it down again, and I leave it for a full day to dry because I don't want any salt up in the joints. That's how much I take care of my equipment because I want it to last. Because even though like I, I am endorsed by a tripod company and you know, but you don't want to take advantage of that at the yeah. same time, you know. Yeah. Oh hey, can I get another tripod? I kind of busted the last one. <laughs> hey Mark, this is your sixth one this year. It could be like an end of the world uh, shot though. You could be standing on the wall of Black Rock as the waves are coming towards you and you get the perfect shot. But listen, it could be the end of the world. You're still never gonna get that class shot. I don't know who photographed it with Alan Merner. Fishing out oh. of the window at the Claremont. No, no, it, yeah. it was the break, wasn't it? It was the break of the Claremont. Oh, it, it, was, the, it was. What? Yeah, I don't know which one to the fucking I, don't I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to find it. I think it's did they own the Claremont? Yeah, don't they? They owned both of them. You see? Oh, did they? Anyway, he was in one of them. I think it's the yeah. Claremont. He was. He was sitting out the window. Yeah. Honestly, like, like it doesn't matter how many storm photos you photograph from Black Rock. If you don't have that one, you haven't. Yeah. You haven't won. Yeah, that one is a winner all, all year. I'm right? off just back to photography. Where in, if you could pick a place to take a photo, a place in the world, is there somewhere you on the bucket list that you want to go to and pick that one? Oh, oh. I'd almost be string. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just, so many places. Like, I could list off, like, I know, I, like, I, like, I'd love to get to London. There's loads of spots around London. I'd love to go to Santorini. And then even a, other places like around like uh, Italy, like Cinque Terre, and a couple of other places like that. There, are a little bit less known. You'll know the photos, you won't know the area names. Um, and I'd love to go back to New York again because the when I was there in New York in 2018, they were still only building that. What's it? The Hudson Yard? Is it the Hudson Yard? Is that what it's called? Or um, oh yeah yeah yeah. So we what, Kev, what year were we there? Oh, you, know that, you know that spirally thing? Have you, you know you know that spiral. No. I think it's called Hudson Yard. It's it's oh, yeah. it's been around 10th Street, and um, it's it ran by the High Line. So the High Line actually, the High Line walk actually walks along it. So there's a there's a few new viewpoints there, um, and we spent like very little time in Brooklyn that thing. So we did say we'd go back to Brooklyn if we did go uh, to New York. So I'd love to do some more of that stuff as well. And if you're out for a walk, Mark, like do you just and then you mean out for a walk and it's like that's a that's a good spot. That's a good spot. You do are you always thinking about the photography? Even when you're out just for a casual walk, yeah. Oh yeah. Casual walks. I could be sitting in the house thinking of photos. Okay. <laughs> I'd be thinking of photos the whole the whole time and non nonstop. And like like and because I've branched away, not only just doing the landscapes and doing portraits and all that there now, uh, my mind just be constantly thinking. I like I have a drum video now that I'm planning to do for April. And uh, and because uh, there's there's a there's a there's a, there's a there's an anniversary coming up then not for me for someone else there's an anniversary coming for that and I want to do something for it so I've been putting in place uh, first of all just trying to get guys who can actually do the video for me so I want to I'm hooking up with a couple of guys that I really like their work and the next is to maybe organise venues and hopefully that COVID doesn't ruin the whole thing on me. Um, shouldn't do we're going to be on our own so uh, but yeah no so that even even at that but when it got with some things with the photos like as you as you say kev i could be i could be walking like doing the um trying to think the boyne walk down in navin and then you see uh dunmore castle up 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 on the hill you know and you're, you're like it's february it looks a bit shit but you know what that'll be class in september i'll come back yeah. in six months i'll come back in six months time okay i'll come back in a year and get it, you know, or you might come back in six months' time, and it, and it, the weather wasn't the weather, the weather wasn't right. Next year, 
and you know, there's a there's a quick idea has now turned into a year and a half's work. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. thought the way you were going to warn the Kev was that you ever out walking and you see something and you just whip it out. No, no. Um, I thought that was it. Kev was going to warn the camera as well. The camera as well. I don't. Yeah. I don't even put the camera. Yeah. I'd actually go bring the camera with me. I. Uh, I've tried to do that. I have friends of mine who can do that, who will have the camera with them and they can just boom, boom, boom. I can't. I need to plan like mad. I've gone on I've gone on photography outings with friends yeah. and I'm carrying the big bag and I have the tripod on the bag. So it's, you know, it weighs about 15 kilos. And I'm like just walking around for two hours solid and I haven't taken the camera out once. Okay. <laughs> I've done full shoots. And I, so I don't, I don't head out with guys all that much. Uh, if I don't have any plans, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I mean, if nothing planned in my head, I'll go out with guys. If I have something planned, you'll never catch me going with someone else on that day. I'll go out my own because I want to make sure that I get it because yeah. I don't want to get distracted having the crack or whatever. Like, because it's happened plenty of time. You're having a crack, and you're like, oh, missed it. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back next year and get it again. So we will. But right. Camille, I know you do the headshots as well because obviously you worked with Baz uh, Black, who we had on there. Uh, Last week, Kev? Jesus, I'm already yeah, forgetting. Two weeks Last ago. week. What, two weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Um, so, was, so, random question. Kev asked you, right, like, is there any way you would love to go take a photo, okay? Is there anybody, for any certain reason, without making this sound really fucking creepy, right, that you'd like to take a headshot of? Like, is there anybody in the world that you look at, kind of, whether it's, like, say, for example, Baz Black in general has this kind of aura about him because of the likes of the tattoos and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. is there anybody that you just kind of would go, huh? That guy, that guy, you know what I mean? Like, so anybody ever you thought of like that? No, I don't Strange know. Kind of question. With that one, I would now with only thing is with, with Baz. There's a funny thing with Baz is both of us wanted to work with each other, and neither of us would approach each other out of respect <laughs> because we didn't want to be seen as tugging on each other's coattails. Yeah. And then when I saw him in Kin, I went, Fuck, I missed my chance. <laughs> yeah. And then a week, a week later, he actually mailed me, and I was just like, Man, I wanted, I wanted to mail you for ages. Then I saw you in Kin. And I was just like, oh, I missed the opening there because you're just like, you know, hey, do you want to do a collab? You know, and you, you get all the <laughs> collab things, you know, and you know, and you're like, what, the, what is that? What, what, what's, the, what's that buzzword or the weakness? You know, like, uh, but no, for for the headshot stuff and all, and even just in portraits in general, I don't, I wouldn't be really looking as for people I want to specifically yeah. shoot, but I'd rather get my name there that I'm the one that people want to call. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, we ever need a shot, like you know, I mean, like, yeah. you know, like we can strike a pose. You know what I mean? It could be like or, or something. Like, I don't, I, just, I don't know. I don't know if we could. Pick I still up. have the, I still have the Movember going on. So, like, you know what I mean? We, yeah, it's going quite strong. It's, I'm telling, I'm shocked it actually grew at all. To be honest, like I did it before, and I looked like. Well, a German fella, I'm not saying who. Um, so I did like um, <laughs> Austrian, Austrian, yeah, Austrian. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it didn't go very well, like so it didn't. Um, but yeah, no, but no. I just thought I'd ask that question because, like, look, you're in, like, you're doing so much. Like, I'm not being funny with you. You have forty five thousand followers on Instagram, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, if you can throw like two or three hundred of them this way, like. That would be a huge help for us to get even to a thousand, <laughs> right? Let alone, <laughs> let, let alone yeah, forty. I'll do my bit to help that. I'll do my bit. To help yeah. That. So it is like, hey, okay. but no, but look, obviously you're loving everything. Like life's going great. You obviously have a family there that's massively supportive, and you're like, I'm away yeah. to take a photo. Um, I'll see you I, in about I'm, seven hours. I sometimes don't even see. I just, I just walk out the door. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be away. I'll be, I'll be back in bed. He's oh, gone I've, again. He's I've, gone again. Yeah, I've, I've gone before. Um, oh, what was the worst? The worst I ever did was I went to Ravensdale and I ended up hiking and I just kept hiking and hiking and hiking. And I came to one of the clearings. And I was like, oh, there's a clearing there. And you know, the, the trees, there was an opening in this clearing. There was trees coming this side, that side. And then you could see Dundalk in the distance. And it was before sunset, and I, I was just like, mm. so I ended up uh-huh. waiting. So I found a dead tree in the middle, and I was like, you know, that might frame it nicely. And I get the uh, the street lights in the background, and it looked nice. So I had to wait for an hour and a half for that. And so I was away on my phone on Snapchat doing stories. This is before Instagram had stories. And I was doing Snapchat stories on my iPhone 4S, and Snapchats back then used to drain the crap out of your iPhone batteries. Yeah. So I did the, I did the shot, which I came home, thought was shit, didn't even edit it, deleted it. So I spent all this time, and that's the thing about me as well. If I don't like a photo, I don't keep it, I delete it. And um, so, I, yeah, so the photo didn't even work out for all the effort, right? I saw a deer, I wasn't prepared for it, and I was just like, and it was literally, <laughs> literally 
about 20 feet away from me. And I was just like, in my head, I went, don't you fucking come near me. Antlers on, I was just like, yeah. Get it, you know, because I didn't want to touch the tripod because I had it set up for my photo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like, what Brilliant. am I going to do? I can't shoot away with the tripod. I have it set. I don't want to move it. And then uh, on the way, on the way back down, I took it. You know, one of these very uncool uh, headlamps. Yeah, I didn't know that when it was in the bag, hitting off everything else, it was turning itself on and off the whole time and wasted the battery out. Oh no! Yeah, so I'm, I'm going down. I'm like going, oh man. Because they get the street lights, you know, you have to wait well after sunrise or sunset to get into dusk. So you know what I mean. Your, your eyes are kind of like, whoa, what's going on here at this stage? And then you then you realise I have no lamp. So then I got the uh, got the phone out. The phone didn't last long either. Uh, the battery. So I had to hike down Ravensdale in the pitch black. I end oh up getting. God. I stayed on the main. I stayed on the main road a bit. And when okay. I, got, I got I got back to the main gate down near the main road I had to walk all the way along the road back to the car park oh, my god yeah that's an and, effort and a half and I didn't even get a photo out of it because I hated the photo <laughs> I thought the photo was shit <laughs> man well that's good about deleting the dough because then you don't have you don't want to spend time looking at it going can I salvage this can I make you know what I mean like, is it just like boom gone don't like it Bin. no I'm really particular about that and even like uh, for night skies unless they're full, the sky is full of stars I really don't like like, I, like when I'm in Dublin uh, I get I get trapped along the keys just because you know I have a C customs house. Yeah. The list goes on, the list goes on, and even the four courts now have the uh, the scaffolding down off them. But that area is quite sketchy at the minute. So whenever the guards decide to actually clean that area up, yeah. maybe I'll go back there because there is no way. I don't. I try not to put myself into dangerous situations either, and there are some sketchy areas along that with Dublin, like you know, because you're going to be standing there. Everyone knows whatever you have in your hand is expensive because it's, you know, you're yeah. not carrying it exactly. in the bag. That's the way yeah. the mentality is. If it's in a bag, it's what we need. And you just don't need that aggro. Do you know what I mean? So if you don't, don't put yourself into situations unnecessarily. So uh, I drove past it. And that's not me being uh, a bit cynical or a bit stereotypical. I drove down that area at the time that I'd be shooting. Yeah. And the heads that were sitting right where I want to be standing, I was just like, Nah, I did kept boxing. I did boxing. You know, I can handle myself, but I would rather not have to. And yeah. you know, you're going to be protecting your gear. Something's going to happen, and someone will do something stupid. So it's just like, unfortunately, not. But um, but Mark, like, as well, there's the places around the, the town at the moment. I think stuff happening around the town is absolutely fantastic. Like the the buildings, the, the architecture and dock. I think is really standing out even more than it used to. Uh, with all the development that's going on with the painting of all the buildings that's happening, even the old Queen's Hotel, uh, the scaffolding being removed from that. I think some of the stuff around the dock is absolutely fantastic. The, like the, the shop fronts or the shop fronts, but if you if everybody looks up, the stuff that's happening above that, I think the architecture in the dock is absolutely fantastic. And I, I, I'd love to say this as well. Like, like I think a nomination for Martin McGilligan to get some sort yeah. of award for his effort because it's uh, he's the man behind all that between the murals and the fa- you know the, the facelifts of all them buildings he's the man behind that and like there's li- literally when you, if you talk to um, Sinead in, in the Dundalk t- uh, tourist office who, you know it's in the same office that he is at they'll say to you like there's no idea too wild for him to consider like you know putting like ju- just saying so I am or I'm away or yeah. you know, <laughs> some of those you know Dundalk sayings. I think people come to me going, what is written on the walls? I'm like, come on, dude, classics. Classics yeah. is what's on the road. <laughs> and and Martin, Martin was a photographer uh, before all this really kicked off. Martin Martin actually photographed my wedding. Uh, so, oh, like, yeah. yeah, he photographed my wedding before he, he turned his hand to this. Like, So it is that you see him even at one stage, uh, I know uh, there at uh, Francis Street, he was up on top of a, a cherry picker painting, painting the top of the wall like I was he, he was yeah. doing it himself as well you know what I mean like it's not like just an idea that just comes to him that and he gets some random or to paint it like he's up there he's on the he's on the cherry picker he's doing it as well like it's absolutely yeah. well he's done for the town like, it is like especially from Street at the minute from Street looks absolutely unbelievable like if you look even from Earl Street looking down into Compressor Street oh like, yeah the, the colors and the stuff that's going on yeah. above it's absolutely unbelievable it's it's great for the town i think and even even around church street as well he transformed all church street that like everything that was done was done so tastefully 
and considerate as well for the pedestrians, the, you know, the motorists. Because there was a lot, there was a lot of worries. Remember, in, in, in the beginning with Cabrassa Street, there was a bit of worry that we're going to turn into a bit of a, a bit of a yeah. drama. West yeah. Street. You know what I mean? Thankfully, we didn't. <laughs> we yeah. didn't. So, a sense, yeah. one-way streets are a bad idea. Um, well, in some regards, but like you know, but uh, no, he's he's done phenomenal work, and the, and then as well as that, like you know, the money that's gone into the murals and the artists that they're getting in. Uh, like I got it. I got a chance to photograph um, Lou. On yeah, unbelievable. Hey. You know, unbelievable. Um, all they say. Yeah. Even that the dog. Way. I think the dog really kind of. The, the the wolf hand really kind of stood out. Was, it's the eyes. Up to, yeah, it's yeah, the eyes. Yeah. He actually looks like it's, it's a dog, like it. You know, <laughs> some of the stuff. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like it's not. It's if a I big fucking draw, dog. Kev. Like, if I try to draw a dog, like it wouldn't look like that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but it's like, like a sheep. <laughs> fair play to him. Like I think it's absolutely. It is. I know we're going off track, but like, it is. Some of the stuff that's happened around. I think it's great, and I'm sure for your say for your 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 passion of photography to have this stuff happen around the town. I think it's just even. It gives you more shots, it gives you more luck, like especially I mean the Queen's yeah. Hotel. I think it's just it's stunning. It's painted again, it's the scaffolding's really most most of it's down at this stage. I think it looks it looks stunning, like yeah, because I like I don't know about Jews, but I, like I don't really remember a time where there wasn't scaffolding on that building yeah. as a kid. That Air Street, the bottom of Air Street, that one there, is that the yeah. Is that yeah. the Queen's Hotel, uh, Catherine Fee Solicitor yeah, or something that's like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No yeah, win, yeah. no fee, Catherine Fee or something. That's a rather thing. Yeah. Um, plug for her. Maybe she'll come on the show. <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I, I knew I had a feeling that she was wrong with it, but you're right. I don't ever remember there not being oh. that scaffolding there, like ever. Yeah. I think, like, even like, like, like I'm, I'm 35, so like, when was Earl Street made pedestrian? I think that had scaffolding on it then, too. I think a bit of scaffolding at once, and then the fire. Do you remember McKenna Man? McKenna Man went in fire and all that. I think that's when it really got a lot of damage at that stage. I think that's when it, it, it all went up at that stage, really. That's when it really kind of took over. And it did, it, it kind of ruined that whole whole vision of that whole area. Like, I think it's really come, come back, even okay. there. Uh, the guy in the, beside, beside the courthouse, do you know what I mean? That, that picture there as well, it looks. I think Who is that kind of, guy? Am I lost? Who is the guy that's there at like the courthouse and that? He's an adventurer. I don't yeah, know. like Columbus or something. No, or some dude like that. No, I, I don't know. Well, I know the one down the other end of the town, and Churchy. That is Oliver Plunkett. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, if the wife here doing the dishes beside me, um. So I have. Uh, so Mark Avril says hello to you. So she does. She follows you on Instagram, as you might be able to hear her oh. roaring in the background. But yeah, I think, I think, I think there's, there's one. As I said, one of them was it uh, is Oliver Plunkett down the bottom of the town. Like, but it is. I think it's great. Oh no, it is. It is great. Um, it should be said as well, just because the just for me talking to the Crown Plaza, because when I, you know I was I was talking to him asking when was the artist going to be finished with the mural, and one thing I had to do was in order from you know to there was there were a little bit there were a little bit apprehensive even even with me for you know for, for giving over the information was. They were afraid that I'd be taking photos to try and sell them. So th those murals, murals in general, are one of the most highly protected uh, arts. Yes. Go. So, like for me as a photographer, th the way the law works is that if you take the photo, like, like even if, if I had the camera set up on a tripod and say, uh, "Kev, you walked over to the camera and you went snap," even though I'm doing the shoot, it's all my equipment, it's my photography, right? You took the photo on the camera. You own that one specific photo because you. Press so that's where the law lies. Whoever shoots the photo owns the rights of the photo. There's very few cases where it doesn't actually apply to that. Only except for murals. When you shoot, wow. when you shoot a mural, you can't sell that because the rights belong to the artist of the mural. You, okay. can, give it, you, can, you can use it for editorial, but you cannot use it for commercial use. So I can't sell the photos I have. Of the, of you the can't put it into your artist. next book for toxic. Yeah. No, I would, I, I would have to get permission off the artist, and okay. they were a little bit apprehensive in that. So it's kind of just for any anyone who's following, who's looking to photograph the murals around town, just just be aware that you won't be able to buy these prints off local photographers because they're not allowed to. And as well as that, you uh, as a photographer as well, just be aware. Don't plan on trying to sell it because you could get yourself into trouble. You just, I just thought I'd just put that out there, just because yeah. uh, they are beautiful pieces of work, but you just have to respect the artist, you know, on both sides. As a photographer, you don't want to be taken advantage of, and mural artists are the same; they don't like to be taken advantage of. And like, reach out to them, and you know, like I reached out to that that uh, that artist, and I just I had just missed the window to maybe even photograph him before we left. I had said it to him on the 
Friday, but he was he was on a plane home on the Saturday or something like that. Um, but I sent the photos to him. I sent him full photos, photos, and I was here. Walk away, you. These are you know. I just want to give them to you. Just you know, that is an amazing piece. And uh, same with Martin. I give I give the photos over to Martin. You know, because I be one for wanting to promote the area as best I can. Yeah. Yeah, as much as I can. So I try to help out as much as I can when it comes to stuff like that. There, like, you know, as long as it's as long as it's benefiting the town, not benefiting some single individual or a company. If it benefits the town for tourism, yeah, I help as much as I can. I think uh, uh, before we finish up, Mark, I think it is that's what it is. I think like, people can. I, I, we talked about this before to me and Pickle. Like people can slag off the town if you're from the town, but don't ever, don't dare do it if you're not from the town. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. it is this thing of. Especially in the last couple of years, maybe maybe even before COVID, stuff was happening. I mean, people are starting to really love the town again. Like it's really maybe a lot to do. Maybe some of it to do with Dundalk FC and stuff like that. But like, people are loving the town again and loving stuff that's happening in the town. And you can see things generating. And there's, this love of the town is really happening again. I think it's great. To, it's great for it. Like it's about time as well. But like the way because the way because I've been to I haven't been everywhere around the country. I'm not even going to try and pretend to help. Well, I've been to Killarney a whole lot of times, and I, I kind of rate Killarney and the dock kind of in, in very similar aspects, where both of them are at the foot of mountains. All right, the McGilly Cuddy Reeks are massive compared to the hills of Cooley. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, like, Sleeve Foy is what, 580 metres? Something like that, yeah. What, what's uh, Karen Two Hill? 1,000? I think it's, it's, it's double, double. It's double, yeah. It's over, it's over 800 anyway. Yeah. Um, but you know they've got Ross Castle, we've got Roach Castle, we've also got Hugh Collins Castle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you know, and we've got we've got all that. The, the Dundalk Bay is the biggest uh, mass of water in the on the east coast. And look at all the spots that we have along the Cooley Peninsula. Kilwera Church, where Joe yeah. Burton's ancestors are buried, or something like that. I know relations and yeah. anything is a lot like like you know we got we've got just just loads of stuff to love about here. But, you know, it's always the case, you know, if you go to someone in New York and say, oh, I love New York, this, that, and the other, and they're going, why? Because they yeah. see it every day. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like you said, like, you only went to Coo Holland's Castle last year. My dad is 67. And the first time he, and he, so he was Duffy Stores, the one-armed bandit was his dad. So Brian Duffy was his dad. I was my granddad. Okay. Uh, Duffy Stores in the Castle Town Road. That's that's my heritage. So they grew up in the, on, on, on um, they grew up on the Castle Town Road. He never visited Roach Castle until I released the book. Wow. I, bought him with me. Yeah. I was going to do a promotional video part of it, and I am not using the video, but I took him with me to help me doing the video, and it was his first time ever going to Roach Castle, and that was in 2018. And it is it's stunning, like some of the stuff is stunning, like it's huge, it's yeah. huge. Why was it not in Game of Thrones? Yeah, you know what ah, I mean. It really, yeah. some, but it, is, it makes no sense, especially when you come in that 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 side where you actually entrance into it. But then yeah. you look across to the other side, and it's just this mass drop, like, and you're like, "Jeez!" Oh yeah, man, I gotta go to this place. Eh? I know you well, Have you not been? Have you not no, been? No, I had the last castle I went to was a castle in Dava Castle, probably. Fuck me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, so it was no, there's a castle in Talonstown. I think I went to one time. Um, oh yeah, Loud Hall. Loud and, Hall. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I went there when I was young, but again, that was like thirty years ago. So that's no. that's, that's supposedly in my that's supposedly in my Way past, way in my past, my father's father's, my father's mother's mother's mother used to own Loud, Loud Hall or something like that back in the day. And that was designed by the same person who designed Buckingham Palace. It has the same number of windows, except for one. They blocked up a window. Wow. It has like something like 365 windows on the building. It's like it's loads. There's ridiculous amount. There's one wall and it's just windows. <laughs> it's it's my levels of just window, 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 window. I don't know. I don't know how many windows are per room inside it. Like, <laughs> but it's in, it's in a, it is. It's unfortunately like a lot of places. It's in a shambles. Yeah, like, like the one that, that we like, Steve, like Stevenson House. That was that's a, that's a beautiful building, Stevenson House. Like. Yeah. I don't know. I gotta start going to some of these places. So I, mean, I do. Okay. Like, yeah. Hey, I don't know if you've driven. I don't know if you've driven to Omeet lately. Like the town village has gone the same way. Yeah, it's awful. Well, she can't be all right that way. She yeah, well, actually, yeah, I'd run. I'd, I'd do the run along the Greenway, you know what I mean? I'd run along the Greenway and then you'd pass the town village. Like it is, it's just, you see, so Derek, and it, it's getting, it gets worse every couple of months. You know what I mean? You just see oh. more bits fall off, more bits fall down, like, and then somebody decides to have another fire in it or whatever, you know what I mean? It just, it just wrecks it even more. Like, And I wouldn't mind it. They had that set up 
I was set up class. I used to do airsoft years ago, and I did a game in that, and it was unbelievable. It was class. The only thing was the canteen was flooded and had no lights on. So if you didn't have boots, waterproof boots, and a, a torch on your gun, you weren't allowed in because it was such a death trap. But the Coca Cola slide's still there, lads. Oh, oh, what a, it was class. It was class. And like the pool, the pool was unbelievable. Like the stuff that happened when we were kids like that. But I remember being there on a holiday. We went there on holidays. We had no money. And my father decided to bring me on holidays. And instead of going the old way, he went through Newry and came back around to make it look like you were actually traveling oh, in the distance. But it was, oh, it was Good unbelievable. Man, John. Spot. Good man, yeah. John. I might be going through the checkpoints just to make <laughs> You don't know. We were in a high ace van, right? We were in a high ace van, oh, right? My oh, brother's in the back. Oh, and oh, this fucking, oh. this boy fucking from fucking. West London or whatever puts a gun through the window where he's going like and I'm like what the fuck is going on what like, me holidays what me holidays <laughs> I think my father ended up grabbing the gun and going what the fuck are you doing and some boy his, his superior was further up he was like he's seen he was a, what, a six year old or seven year old sitting in the front seat and the gun pointing at me and he's like get the fuck out of there so he pulled like, he pulled him back like so stuff, stuff of the stuff that was happening was crazy Oh, wow. Kev. That's some story. Hey, yeah. we've had 46 episodes. You never told me that story yet in the podcast. There you go. That's unbelievable. I think yeah. the, you know, the, the only thing I can remember about the troubles was my parents used to take us up to Carlingford with binoculars to go hunting to look for the gunboat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's as close. I, I remember, I remember the, uh, the checkpoint at Nuri being a notorious one. And uh, I think the car got, I think, I think our car got strip searched one time because. We were we were given lip to my parents. Why aren't we going? And my dad was like, "Shh, they can hear you." So they were like, "Hey, you! How do you know that? Get out!" Oh, <laughs> oh and they just they just had a look. They had a look around the whole car. Remember but, the thing they used to make the cars go up. Remember there was a thing that would it would shoot a car up into the air. It was like it come up from the road or something, right? It did, Kevin. Tell you honest to God, it must have been like a I don't know what you call it. Say they call called Fast and Furious. <laughs> well, I always had a memory when I was young and a car did it beside us that there was a car stopped or something that or he went to take off and this thing jumped or like shot up out of the ground or something like that <laughs> <laughs> and lifted the car up oh, well, it's good film hey good oh film. yes Pickle I love your imagination boy Fair just, play. oh Pickle don't be eating Harry Bow when you're watching him man <laughs> Oh, that's, that's I, to me, me, to me it happened. That one. I think most of the memories of my life, to me, it happened. So it did, like, so it is. Hey. But no, listen, <laughs> yeah, Mark, it has been absolutely savage having a chat with you, man. It really has. Um, it has been. That, that last story, that little land up there is a, is a gold one. <laughs> cool. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we go, we've something for the next episode, Kev. <laughs> this is all we have, hey. Well, but thanks very much for coming on, guys. If you guys, if you stayed with us for the hour, <laughs> Because if you do want to buy uh, Mark's book, if you if you do want to buy Mark's book, it is there on his website, uh, markphotography.com, uh, and uh, it's loud rediscovered. It's twenty three euro, absolutely fantastic. Especially coming up there, in, there's a couple of weeks left till Christmas. Mark has plenty of books there in the in the house, ready to be sold. So two hundred left, and that's it. Two hundred left, and then uh, uh, get get them get them got. And get Instagram, Facebook, get following them if you're not already doing. If you're not already part of the 45,000 that are soon going to be coming over to the Kevin Pickle show as well, um, <laughs> get on it. 300 though. 300. Yeah, I can only afford 300. That's what, it'll take us over a thousand. Yeah, is, well, Mark, the thing is, if I get if we get 5,000, I have to get my nipple pierced. So I do. Yeah. Now, we're never going to get 5,000. Thank God. We will. Well, we get well, well, we could maybe sort that out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting my nipple happen. pierced. <laughs> I'll tell you a few sites. <laughs> 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 Nicely done. Come here, Mark. Thanks so much, man. We really appreciate it. And happy Christmas to you and the family. Yeah, cheers. Cheers for having me. Happy Christmas, lads. All the best, Mark. See you now.